In today's video, I'll be explaining to you why I sent back my pair of Nike Tempo Next Percents. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh and on this channel we talk everything running shoes and triathlon related. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Today, I'll be giving you my first impressions of the Nike Tempo Next Percent and explaining why they were so poor I sent the shoe back. Although I don't currently have the shoe, I'm still gonna be doing it like I normally would do any of my other first impression videos, but it'll be more in a way of telling you what I thought was wrong with the shoe and what I'd like to see from the next high-paced Nike shoe. So let's begin as we always do by talking about the upper. And the upper wasn't the worst part of the shoe for me. This upper is the Flyknit as we've seen in a number of different Nike shoes. I've already said that I really like Flyknit when it's implemented well, and I'll stand by that. I said that in my Nike Infinity React video, which you can see up in one of the corners, and I think that it could have been really good in this shoe. I think it's a slightly coarser version compared to some of the other shoes, and it has an offset lace design, which Nike claim will improve lockdown in this shoe, but I can tell you that my experiences running on a treadmill in this shoe, the lockdown was not nearly as good as I would have expected from a higher paced shoe. The material just felt too large in some areas, too small in other areas, it would bunch up and then bag. It just, everything felt wrong with the sizing for my men's size nine. I played around with the laces, with the different socks and stuff, but I just couldn't get quite comfortable in the upper of this shoe and nothing would improve the lockdown which is such a massive problem for a shoe that has tempo in its name it's clearly designed for some higher paced efforts and there's no way that that thing would feel stable on your feet every time i tried running fast on the treadmill it would wibble and wobble all over the place and i simply couldn't be dealing with that when there are so many other shoes that do a really good job of being a fast paced shoe with some great lockdown. For instance, the Saucony Endorphin Speed, which I reviewed really recently, which you can see up in one of the corners, does this perfectly. It's a lightweight, fast shoe that has excellent lockdown. Even though it has a proper heel counter, it still didn't have as much lockdown as some of the other Nike shoes with the Flyknit, where they don't have a proper heel counter such as the Infinity Run. But in all fairness, it's not a terrible upper. It definitely wasn't the area of the shoe that I hated the most. That would be the midsole. When it comes to the midsole, this is where the shoe really let me down. It just felt like a mismatch of Nike technologies. They picked up one bit from each of their shoes and threw them in and it just didn't work. Let's start back and work our way forwards. There's a large heel piece on the shoe, which is React Foam. And I don't understand what that's there for. Maybe you can argue that it makes the shoe more durable when you compare it to the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly, which are vast majority the Zoom Foam. But the massive bit of React Foam on the heel doesn't really do a lot for me, especially as someone who is a four foot striker. I'm never gonna be landing on that massive bit and taking the impact from the rest of the shoe and protecting that Zoomex foam. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And for a shoe that's really heavy, if I was Nike, I would be looking ways to chop weight off the shoe. And that looks like a clear thing that could have gone. As you move forward, we get rid of this big chunk of React foam. We go into two layers of Zoom foam now. You know, as I'm a fan of the Flyknit, I'm a fan of the Zoom Foam. I really, really enjoy this, especially for some higher paced efforts. But when you cut out some of that Zoom Foam and add in the AirPods, the Air Zoom Pods, whatever Nike are calling them in this version of the shoe, that is where the shoe started to really fall down for me. I actually quite liked the AirPods in the Vaporfly from my limited experiences with that shoe, but these ones don't quite seem the same. They feel slightly harder, slightly stiffer, and the implementation feels very different to me. Even trying to push this up to higher paced speeds, it didn't feel right, and that, that just can't be done when a shoe has tempo in the name. And the nylon plate within the sole was a really nice touch, and it felt really stiff, which is something you would want. However, it didn't seem to match with the AirPods right at the front and then the big React at the back. 
everything just felt out of balance and a little bit wishy-washy while running in this shoe. I much prefer the implementation of a nylon plate again in something like the Saucony Endorphin Speed. It just feels so much smoother throughout that stride. Plus a cheaper shoe from Nike the Zoom Fly 3 has a carbon plate and so it's a little bit confusing for me that a shoe that is £170 in the United Kingdom has a nylon plate when Nike clearly are able to put a carbon plate in a cheaper shoe. I'm not saying that a carbon plate would be better, I just don't understand the thought process behind picking a nylon plate and the Zoom Pods. It just seems like they were missing something from this shoe. The midsole was the main reason why I didn't end up keeping this shoe. If you run in it, I'd really interested to see if you got on better with it, because for me, it simply didn't sit well with me and I couldn't bear to run in it for any length of time. I don't really have a lot to say on the outsole of this shoe. Generally, it felt really good for my limited testing on my treadmill. However, that isn't necessarily representative of how it would fare out on the road. The one thing I would say is that this is a loud shoe. I don't know what about the outsole makes it so loud, but you probably could hear it from 100 miles away. Every time you take a step, it slaps down. I don't know if that's the, the midsole design or the outsole design, but I'm putting it in the outsole section because it affects me, you know, the outside of the shoe. It's a really loud shoe. And I don't think plated shoes need to be super loud. I've tried many other ones. I've never had this problem. So I don't know what Nike are doing, but man, this is the loudest shoe I've ever run in. So just be mindful of that. To conclude, I think the best way to describe this shoe is it's an amalgamation of all the different Nike technologies and they've all been brought back to life as a, some sort of zombie shoe. I think if they'd gone slightly simpler and removed one or two bits or changed the implementation of some of these technologies, it could have been an amazing shoe and it really could have been that mid-priced tempo, some races kind of shoe that we've seen other shoes absolutely nail and become fan favourites. I'm hoping that in the future we see a similar shoe idea to what the Tempo Next Percent was trying to do. Uh, you know, a shoe that has a nylon or hopefully a carbon plate with some React foam and maybe a fly knit upper or a more traditional upper at a cheaper price point than we see the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. Bring that in, bring it to more people, give people the opportunity to do some of their tempo, their fast pace, their race simulations in a shoe that's less expensive, that we're not going to be worried about wearing out too fast. I think that would immediately be a hit and it would sell out so quickly. But the Nike Tempo Next Percent isn't that shoe. And for all of the reasons I outlined in this video, I sent my pair back after running with them uh, for a very short while on a treadmill and I won't be doing any further reviews of this shoe. It was a real disappointment for me. I expect more from Nike and I really hope whatever they bring out in this range next will be significantly better than this shoe. That's all for this video. Let me know in the comments if you have a pair of Nike Tempo Next Percents and if you like them more than I did or if you ran into a lot of the same problems that I did. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And on screen now, you're gonna see a link to my Saucony Endorphin Speed 100 mile review, which I would suggest as the shoe that is much better than the one I've just reviewed. Thank you all for watching.